Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us today for this very special graduation. I want to sincerely thank Topeka, Trish, Kate, and the staff of the Ladies of Hope Ministries. Thanks to our sponsors, allies, and partners who are here with us today. That you have taken time out of your day to join us speaks volumes about your belief in the Ladies of Hope and also in me. I also want to thank my fellow cohort members. No, my new friends, my sisters, we did this. Several years ago, I coined a phrase that I have trotted out many times, but it is particularly relevant today. Prison is what I went through. It is not who I am. I have several distinctions that I'm proud of. And let's be honest, also a few I'm a little less proud of. But overwhelmingly, I am proud that today I am standing with my sisters ready to embark on this next new chapter in my life. Someone once said that in life, there are no regrets, only lessons. If that were true, I clearly should have a PhD. I had the opportunity to come home from prison and put the entire experience behind me, resume my life as a soccer mom, and never speak of the experience again. But that was not me. I've always been the scrappy one, the fighter for right, the one who stood up for others, the great debater, the arguer. When I came home, I was committed to changing the system, and I have. In this space, I am referred to as an OG. I've been in this movement before there was even a movement, and certainly long before women were part of the movement. I have accomplished a lot, yet there is more to come. This past year, COVID came in like a wrecking ball. We were all forced to pivot, to do things differently. We became experts in Zoom. We all became tolerant when those Zoom meetings were photobombed by dogs and children and spouses, but pivot we did. And the Faces of Women in Prison program pivoted with us. Not missing a beat, we rose to the challenge of virtual trainings. We came together, we shared, we laughed, we learned, we grew. We are all better for our time together. This program has had a lasting impact on each of us. Isolated because of COVID, I nonetheless have been able to find a group of women who both challenge and inspire me. Women who have reached out to me for help, for counsel, for support, and women I have been able to reach out to. This program has opened amazing pathways and opportunities for collaboration and certainly for sisterhood. I am proud of what we've been able to accomplish in this program and equally proud of the accomplishments of my sisters. I get asked frequently about putting my prison experience behind me. It is not behind me. Prison changes us in profound ways on the cellular level and in small, sometimes almost indistinguishable ways. I went to prison. It is not who I am. I went to prison, but it is why I do what I do. I always say that at 2 a.m. I am the most dangerous woman in the world because I'm constantly creating work, new campaigns, new strategies. Currently, I wear a lot of hats, an almost exhausting amount. I lead and represent several organizations in this reform space, tackling issues such as abolishing solitary confinement, women in mass incarceration, parole and probation reforms, voting rights restoration for formerly incarcerated, higher education in prison, and reproductive justice, dignity, and access for incarcerated women and girls. I have the distinction of being the only formerly incarcerated woman in Maryland who has written policy that's gotten passed into law at all levels in my state, several of which have become first in the nation pieces of legislation. Each day, I do what I do because of what I experienced, what I saw, and what I continue to be made aware of. Each day when I wake up, and each night when I lay my head on the pillow, I never forget those that I left behind the fence, and I do not ignore those that are coming into the system. Each day I use my voice, my lived experiences, and my skill set to bring about legislative and policy changes. And each day I work with women to be leaders and change agents in their own communities, to find and flex their power, to change perceptions, narratives, and lives. Now, PTSD aside for just a moment, my prison experience has also been an asset. It has and continues to make me think in original, out of the box, and really unconventional ways. I want to share a piece of advice from Shonda Rhimes that I actually have posted on my bathroom mirror. She said, always look around the table and invite the voices that are not heard. And if you are the one who can offer an unheard perspective, something that can move our shared humanity forward, 
have the courage to speak up even when it feels difficult. Real progress requires moments of tension. If we approach these moments with generosity and curiosity, rather than resistance and blame, we can find entirely new ways forward. This program has provided me with an unparalleled opportunity to hone what I do, expand my network, grow my knowledge base, and see new opportunities. I am growing and speaking my training business. I'm becoming a brand. Who would have saw that coming? And I know, and I know and I believe in my soul that the best is yet to come. I look forward to this next part of my journey, to maintaining my connections with my new sisters, with the Ladies of Hope team, their supporters and partners. I offer all that I have, all that I know, as you too work to challenge, change, disrupt and dismantle the systems of oppression. Thank you, my friend Topeka, for making this opportunity available to me. I am grateful for this past year and for everything that has been made graciously and generously available to me. I thank you again for joining us today, for your time, for your investment, and for your belief in my cohorts and in me. Thank you very much.